Lori Vallow is appealing her murder convictions for killing her two youngest children and her husband's first wife. Her lawyers are raising new questions that could bring Vallow Daybell home earlier than expected. Her attorneys filed the appeal last week. They're asking the Idaho Supreme Court to consider whether the judge wrongly found her competent to stand trial, potential problems with jury selection and evidence, and that her right to a speedy trial was violated. Vallow Daybell is serving three life sentences after being found guilty back in May. Her husband, Chad Daybell, also charged in connection with the deaths of the two children. He goes on trial next year after also pleading not guilty. So here now is trial attorney and legal analyst, Misty Maris. Misty, thank you for giving us some of your time. Uh, talk about the specifics of this appeal here, because is the appeal itself surprising, you know, before we get into all of that, or is it really pretty standard when it comes to defense team tactics? Yes, happy to be here. And it is absolutely standard, especially when you have a defendant who has been convicted and is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. And remember, she's actually serving three consecutive life sentences. And so the defense is always going to put in an appeal. And in fact, in some states, it's an automatic appeal when there's a sentence that is a life sentence without parole. So the appeal itself is not surprising. What is the appeal made up of? Well, there's 16 grounds. And generally what appeals focus on are what's called errors of law. It's evidence that should have come in, that didn't, that shouldn't have come in, that the jury shouldn't have seen. They say the judge made an error in admitting the evidence. Here there's a question about jury selection, obviously a really high profile trial. Uh, there's also a, 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 an argument about the opening statement being improper uh, and as well as other evidentiary issues. But the big argument here is the competency issue and whether or not Lori Vallow was actually competent to stand trial. And I expect that to be a large focus in this particular appeal. Yeah, and Missy, so let's dig deeper into that because I think, like you said, that is really the thing that stands out the most. Uh, she was, in fact, ruled mentally fit to stand trial. Her defense team is saying, you know, wait a minute, but shouldn't, uh, I guess, the objection to that been raised a long time before yes. now? So here's the interesting part. It was. So before Lori Vallow did go to trial, she was in a mental health facility for 10 months. That was back in April 2022. The defense actually made a motion in November 2022 saying that they did not believe she was competent to stand trial. What happens in that situation is that the court does what's called an independent review. There's an independent medical evaluation by a third party with no horse in the race, no stake in the game, who makes a determination about competency. Competency legally is that the individual understands the charges against them and can participate in their own defense. That's the standard. At the time, she was deemed competent. So now that that decision is being questioned. That's after a hearing. And part of what the appeal is asking for and this recent filing is all the records and information relating to that medical evaluation and the transcript of that hearing and what went into making that determination. All of that is going to be very, very relevant ultimately when this appeal is fully hashed out and we have the full briefing. That's going to be the focus on whatever happened during that hearing. All right, so Misty, of course, you know, as we mentioned at the top of this, there was another person uh, involved in all this, charged in this, that's Lori's husband, Chad. Could her appeal and what ultimately happens at all influence his pending trial, which is right now set to start next April? So her appeal will not have any direct impact on his trial. However, you know that the trial lawyers who are representing Chad Daybell, they have the opportunity and the benefit of seeing what happened during Lori Vallow's trial, the benefit of seeing what evidence came in, how that swayed the jury, how that impacted them. So they certainly are doing a diagnostic on her trial and likely on her appeal as well in order to frame, uh, frame and shape their defenses that they'll ultimately raise at his trial. That's going to be a doozy, by the way. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely be watching that one. Yes, we will. All right. Misty Maris, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.